everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden and welcome to day five in my Holidays in the Garden series. Today I am out in my front yard and I want to address my front swoop right here, which I normally in the warm season, I plant with gorgeous annuals, but as you can see, they are starting to fade from the cold, cold, cold fall that we've been having. We've already had a couple frosts and the sweet potato vine is absolutely done and ready to come out. The Super Tunia Vista Jazzberry is still looking pretty good, but I'm ready to take it out because I want to plant my daffodils today. I purchased a whole bunch of daffodils from colorblends.com. This year, my plan is, is to plant a blend of daffodils. Normally, I just plant the basic daffodil, yellow daffodils that I get off of Home Depot. They all bloom at once, they look absolutely gorgeous, and then they fade away. So from Color Blends, Color Blends I purchased a mix which is a daffodil, kind of a long blooming mix. So I will have early blooming daffodils, mid-season daffodils, and late season daffodils. So I'm hoping that next year, early next year, I will have a longer bloom time of my daffodils and I can enjoy them for longer. So what I need to do today is I need to clean out this whole area. I am going to try to leave in my Snow Princess Lobularia because Snow Princess Lobularia can actually handle the cold temperatures that we have and they, it actually thrives with the cold temperatures. So I actually purchased a bunch more that I have in my greenhouse right now, that once I get all these daffodil bulbs in, I'm gonna overplant them with the Snow Princess Lobularia, hoping that I get a big swath of white. And then as, as that those blooms are there, the white, beautiful blooms are there, the daffodils will poke through and I, I'm hoping I can imagine, and I think it's gonna be an absolutely gorgeous show. So I will be using my three inch auger from Power Planter today. Power Planter sent me out two different augers to start trying out and I am absolutely in love with them. I am using them so much and I was the person who was very skeptical about augers. I didn't think I needed it. I was fine with using a shovel. I also thought some of my soil would be too hard to use with the auger. Not true. I absolutely use my auger all the time. I don't think I go one day in the garden without my auger at this point. And that is one of the reasons why I put the Power Planter Auger Starter Kit, the Gardener's Starter Kit, on my Gifts for the Gardener. I will link that video down below. So last week I had the most fantastic opportunity. I was invited to the Proven Winners Creators Roundtable. And what Proven Winners did is they basically took a bunch of creators from Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, brought us all together and then basically just taught us about products. Now Proven Winners has a fabulous auger that they have. It's called the Twistin' Plant. And actually, I wasn't aware of this, but it's actually made by Power Planter. So Power Planter augers and Proven Winners Twist and Planet augers are one in the same. And the owner of the Power Planter company, actually the grandson of the inventor of the original Power Planter, was there and did a whole talk, gave a whole talk to us about the proper way to use the augers, the purpose behind the augers, and the big thing, how to use an auger safely. So when I was watching his presentation, I was actually filming the whole thing because I knew I was gonna refer back to it because the safety of an auger was one of the things that made me really nervous about using an auger. I knew that if it hit something hard or if it hit some clay soil, it could whip around and it could hurt my wrist or, um, you know, like jump out of my hands or, you know, cause some damage. So I was a little bit nervous about it. But Greg Newald, who is the owner of Power Planter and again, the grandson, he did a fantastic presentation on how to use it properly. And I wanted to share that information with all of you. So my plan for today is I am first going to take all these annuals out, get rid of them, add some compost to the area, and then I will show you guys the proper way to set up the auger for your drill and then how to use it safely to plant your bulbs. So let's get going with cleanup. I am going to be taking out all of these and again, putting them in a big pile on the side of my street because my city will come and pick up my green waste on Monday.
the annuals are out. It looks fresh and I don't want to say clean because it's obviously not clean. I still have a bunch of mess to clean up, but I did want to show you all my sweet potato harvest. So I grew a uh, sweet heart lime, sweet Caroline, sweet potato vine right here, this Ipomoea. It is, it's the same family as regular sweet potatoes as you would grow. Look at these tubers. Look at this one. Look at how big that is. Look at how big this one, like, I just can't believe it. It's just so funny. I've never grown this variety of sweet potato before, and I just can't believe how big these tubers are. It's absolutely crazy. Now, you would sit here and you would think, oh, I can eat these. That would be great. That's delicious. They're sweet potatoes, but they're not the type of sweet potatoes that you would want to eat. This plant was bred for the foliage. It was, you know, it was focused on the size of the foliage, the leaves, the color, you know, the, the watering tolerance, all that kind of stuff. And they didn't pay any attention to the taste of the sweet potatoes, of the tubers. So these are not going to taste like a normal sweet potato that you would get at the grocery store. It would probably have way less sugar. It would probably be super Super starchy and just yucky so that is why they are going in the trash or the the green waste recycling I don't know what you call it my green waste pile basically and then I have my roll of annuals I have to say I love rolling up my annuals like that it's become a tradition now where I just try and roll my annuals all the way up and then I drag them over to a pile over here and it's just a crack up for me every year that I do it because it just goes to show how amazing these annuals do for me here in the spot and it's just so fun when they like grow together and weave together that I can literally roll them up like a carpet and drag them over here so it's bittersweet but I love the tradition at this point so after all that work I am hot I'm I'm gonna go change into a lighter sweater and not my Ugg boots <laughs> and I'll be right back and then we can go over the auger safety. So I came back here to my backyard. There are gardeners in the front yard on the street making a lot of noise and I know they're gonna be there for a long time because they do about five of the houses on my street. They do the mowing and the blowing. Uh, so I thought coming back here would give us a little bit more peace and quiet as much as I can find in my neighborhood. All right, so here is my drill that I use with my auger. This one is just a Ryobi brand, but you can use basically any brand that you can get at the big box store. I have an 18 volt, which is not a strong drill at all, but it, as long as it's an 18 volt, it'll work for the augers. Uh, it is a cordless. It does take a battery. You can see I've taken the battery off. And when you use an auger, you really do want to use a cordless drill. And there's a safety reason for that. I'll get to that in a second, but you actually don't want to use a plug-in corded power drill. It's not safe and actually can hurt you. You can see that I have attached the handle to this. This is not necessary. This is not a requirement. It just makes it a little bit easier, something for you to grab onto, uh, a little bit more ergonomically correct. Power Planter actually recommends if you, if you have the ability to put the handle this way so that it's straight out and so then you can kind of bring the auger up and down. I don't have that capability to put the handle straight out like that on this drill. I only have it at the 90 degree side, but again, sometimes I don't even use a handle because I'm too lazy to get it out of the garage. It's not necessary, it's just a preference thing. All right, so the first thing you wanna think about is you wanna think about the speed. Here is the speed on my drill. You want it to be at the lowest speed you have. So here's one, and then if I go like this, it will come to speed two, and I don't want it to be on speed two. I want it to be on speed one so that I can control it and so that auger can get into the soil and it can turn things up and, and uh, dig or aug that hole like I want it to. So you always wanna put the speed on the lowest setting that you have on your drill. Then you wanna attach the auger. So again, I don't have my battery attached. And the reason why I don't have my battery attached is just so that I don't accidentally hit the trigger while I am attaching up my auger. It's just a safety thing. Um, it's something Power Pl Planter recommends. I don't always do it, but I really, really should. So drill has come off and then I'm just gonna open the mouth. I don't know what you call this thing, <laughs> but basically the mouth of the drill. I'm just opening it all the way. And for mine, you just turn it to the right to open it. Then I take my power planter auger. This is my three inch bulb auger. You can see I use it to death. I use it so much. I love this thing, but you can see on the end of it, it's in the shape of a hexagon. And I think this is one of the big differences of a power planter auger versus the augers that you get like, 
you know, in the checkout line at the big box store, they don't have these hardcore hex shaped ends on their augers. So there's nothing for the drill to attach to. I actually have bought some of those cheapo augers before and it just spins and spins and spins in my drill and it's completely pointless. So I think the hex end of this power planter auger makes a huge difference. So you just wanna stick it in the mouth here and then you just start tightening it up. And this is where people start to get really nervous and start to get really scared um, just because it's like, am I doing this right? Am I handling this? You just wanna tighten it all the way, make sure you guys can see it. And then the big key is you want it to lock. So listen very carefully. Did you hear that click right there? That click means that it is locked in. This auger is locked in. This is not gonna loosen up. You just wanna make sure you hear that click and then really, really twist it. On some drills, you actually have to go backwards a little bit just to make sure that you get that click, but you can see I just wanna make sure that I have that click and then I know that my auger is nice and tight in here and it's not gonna loosen up as I'm drilling. Again, I don't have the battery in, so I'm not gonna accidentally spin it as I have my hand on here. All right, now battery goes in now at this point because you're not really gonna to be touching this thing, well, as I just did, but you get it. So here is the key. Here's the thing that I was always confused about and I didn't understand until I saw the presentation for po Proven Winners and Power Planter in Chicago, and that is the clutch on the drill. So the clutch is right here and it has all these numbers here. And basically the clutch is different for every drill. So there's not a number for the clutch that I can tell you that's gonna make it work. So it's different for every drill, it's different for the soil, it's different for how strong you are there's such variability so the way to do it is you take your clutch and you turn it to the lowest number for me the number that I have on my drill is four right there and then it goes all the way up to 24 so that would be the clutch on the highest setting four would be the clutch on the lowest setting so uh, the reason why you don't want to use a corded drill with an auger is because a corded drill doesn't have a clutch like this. Uh, and so it will just it will just go and go and go. And if it hits something hard, that's what's going to whip the drill around and whack you in the leg or break your wrist or something like that. I also have this symbol here. You can turn it to, um, I have one of those drills that, that can hammer in basically. You don't want it to be on that setting because that will actually disengage the clutch. You don't want to disengage the clutch. That's really important for the safety of the auger. So what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna start with the clutch in the lowest setting, and then you're going to try that. That's probably not gonna work because it's probably gonna hit your soil, and then it's gonna trigger the clutch and, it, and the auger's gonna stop working. So if you ever hear people complain that they put the auger in their soil, they turn it on and it just stops, and it just stops, and it just stops, and they're like, oh, my clay soil is too tough for this auger, it's not gonna work. That's because their clutch is too low. It's too low, it's not strong enough. You've set your drill to turn off at the slightest bit of resistance. So what you want to do, start off at the lowest setting, try it out, see if you can drill, if you can aug a hole, and if you can't, turn it a little bit higher. Try it again, see if you can aug a hole, turn it a little bit higher, and you just keep testing it out, trying to be on the lowest setting possible with still being able to aug a hole or drill a hole. If you put it too high, then it's just gonna go and go and go, nothing's gonna stop it, and if it hits something, it's gonna whip out of your hands, and that's when everybody, including myself, gets scared. All right, and that is it. That is the safe way to use your auger. You're gonna get it to work properly if you set the clutch on the right setting. Again, I can't tell you what number is the right setting, because it's different for every situation. So each time you get your auger out to use it, you kind of have to reset it and figure out what level you need it to be on, where it's not too high that it's going to whip out of your hands, but it's not too low that it's not going to aug a hole for you. Okay, so let's recap how to safely and properly use an auger with your cordless drill. You're going to start with your battery out. Handle is optional, personal preference. You're going to turn the speed to the lowest setting. You're going to open up the mouth, whatever you call this thing. You're going to put your auger in and you're gonna tighten it until you hear a click knowing that it is locked. You're going to put the battery back in. Then you're going to turn the clutch to the lowest setting there is. 
For me, it's a four. That might be different on your drill. You're then gonna start doing your test holes. You're going to try and drill a hole. If you hit resistance and the auger stops, you're gonna turn the clutch up a little bit more. You're gonna try and do it again. You're gonna try and aug a hole. If you hit resistance and it stops, you're gonna turn the clutch up again. You want it on the lowest setting of the clutch where you can still aug a hole without it being so strong that this is gonna whip out of your hands. And that is the safe and the proper way how to use your power planter auger in your cordless drill. Now, let's go aug some holes and plant some bulbs. I am done. I have worked all day. I am completely covered in soil. You can see it's all over, but it's so worth it. I feel so accomplished right now. I'm, I'm just so glad I got everything done. So that was 400 daffodils planted. They were part of the spring loaded color blends mix. And the idea with the spring loaded mix, I think I already told you guys this, is that it increases the bloom time. There's from early, early, late winter, early spring, mid spring to late spring. So hopefully I will have a nice long show of daffodils here in my front swoop. Then I also put in Snow Princess Lobularia from Proven Winners. I have had the best luck with the Snow Princess Lobularia when it's cool out. That is when that plant shines. It is so happy. It gets so big. And I have found that if I just leave it in the ground, it will keep blooming and blooming and blooming. So what I wanted to do, I bought these, um, I bought these a couple weeks ago and I've been holding them over in my greenhouse. They are hard to hold over and, you know, hold over in the cans because uh, Snow Princess Lobularia really shows water stress. If you're not so on top of it with watering, not too much, not too little, it will show. And you can see a couple of these kind of got mad at me <laughs> after a while. I think they'll bounce back now that they're in the ground, but they're definitely finicky in the cans. They're much better once you plant them into the ground. So I've got a ton of them all along here and my my vision is a cloud of white with this spring loaded different colors of yellow daffodils popping up all over. I hope you guys can hear me okay. There is another gardener here with his blower. I think it's just gardener's day. Um, it's two days before Thanksgiving, so I think they're just trying to wrap up and do everything that they need to do so they can enjoy Thanksgiving with their families. 
So here you can see, well, you can't really see, they're planted underneath, but you can see the Snow Princess Lobularia. Some of them are looking really, really beautiful and they already have blooms on them. Some of them, not too pretty. I would say like half this plant is probably dead, but there's still some green, some life to it. So I planted it anyway. And I, I have a feeling it'll bounce back. Um, I just, you know, I was trying to be good at watering, but they're just tough. So yeah, so I'm so excited for this whole area to kind of come together. Oh, I'm really sorry about that sound, you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's two. <laughs> This is too funny. I think it's a sign that I need to stop filming. All right, I just had to come inside. It was so loud out there, you guys. I could not even hear myself think. I was waiting for them to stop, but again, I feel like the gardeners on my street, like half the street is done by one set of gardeners and then the other half is done by the other set of gardeners. And they both decided to come today. So that's all right. I'm done with everything I need to do. Um, I did want to tell you guys, I did, since I had the hose out, I wanted to hose down my cut flower garden. Daniel said it would be easier. Daniel, my neighbor, who is an agronomist, a soil scientist. He said it would be easier to water everything down really, really well before I started to turn it over. So I actually did put on the gypsum and I did spread the ammonium sulfate, which I am using for a source of nitrogen, which is the two things that the soil test told me. Um, so ammonium sulfate is, the NPK values are 2100. So it's basically pure nitrogen. Uh, I sprinkled it on everywhere and then I watered the whole area in really really well and I'm gonna let it sit there for a couple days to soak in and then I'll go out there in a couple days and I'll turn everything over. So today was a super uh, productive day. I feel like I got a ton of really good stuff done. Uh, if I just have a couple more days like this and have enough time to get all this stuff done, I feel like I'll finally be on schedule <laughs> with all the things I need to do. But that's okay. I'm getting to it. We're getting to the holiday season and it's it's just hard. It's just all over the place. So I am going to go clean up and then start making dinner. I hope you all enjoyed this very long video. I apologize about the length of it, um, but I just, I just had to cram it all into one video. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today. <laughs> <laughs>